Okay, so now we include another period and we'll show how people demand bonds to smooth to have a smooth consumption path. So we have a budget constraint for each of the two periods and uh, that's just how our representative guy uh, gets uh, funding and how he uses that funding. So if we make money constant and remember this is the payback from the bonds that you lent in the previous period plus the interest you get these are some bonds you're lending today. But you see that if we uh, do the budget constraint of the next period these bonds you're lending today will be the sources of fund of tomorrow because they will be paid back to you plus some interest. So B1 is the link between the two period budget constraints. Savings today are the sources of funds of tomorrow. We solve for B1 in the second uh, budget constraint. We take that over there and uh, we divide over this and we substitute in uh, the period 1 budget constraint right here. This will be B1, the new B1. And now we take that over there and we get this new expression which will be the nominal two period budget constraint. The value of output today times the value of output of uh, next year in terms of uh, today. Same thing for consumption. You're discounting it. You're bringing it to the present period. And now here's the value of bonds in terms of T1. To get these uh, new two period budget constraint in real terms we just have to divide it all by P. And we basically get this and if we want to solve for this which is just consumption for the two periods we're left with this whole expression which will be called X bar. Why? Because it's fixed. If we know how much output we're gonna get because that comes from the uh, production functions and uh, we know what our position in the credit market is going to be then we will be able to make a decision about consumption today and consumption in the future. And that is really important because we can uh, write future consumption as a function of this which will be equal to this and uh, the derivative of C2 with respect to C1 is just going to be minus 1 plus R. Remember the interest rate. So if we plot uh, future consumption in terms of present consumption the slope of this budget line is just going to be this minus 1 plus R, the interest rate. So really we see that uh, uh, this slope is the price of more consumption over time. That is because the real interest rate is the real price of consumption between two periods. But remember, our guy is happy because he is maximizing his utility with respect to this budget line. So this is how we do it. We maximize the utility such that we are in this budget line. We write the Lagrangian as uh, the utility plus some lambda times this, we put it there, and that's that. So the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to C1 is just going to be the utility, uh, the marginal utility with respect to uh, C1 minus uh, this lambda, and that will all be equal to zero. And we do the same for uh, C2 and for lambda. So now we just solve for lambda in these two expressions and we get this. We can just divide by this and we get this. That basically this marginal utility is divided which is really the MRS, the slope of the interest, uh, the, 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 in, the indifference curves is equal to 1 plus the interest rate. So this is the absolute value of the slope of the budget line.
So we maximize utility at the point where the uh, uh, the slope of the indifference curve is equal to the slope of the budget line. You can see right here the slope is equal to the slope of the budget line. And that yields the desired uh, consumption level today and the desired consumption level in the future. And knowing that, uh, our guy will know how many hours he will have to work today to get this amount of consumption and how many hours uh, will he have to uh, work in the future to get this amount of consumption in the future. So the key here is that what relates present consumption and future consumption is the real interest rate which is paid on the bonds you lend in the, P in the period 1.